welcome everybody for another episode of Mondays with Mundy. And that's me, Jim Mundy, the historian for the Union League Legacy Foundation. And if you've been watching these episodes for the last two years, as it's been that long, uh, you've noticed that we've done a few about art. Uh, we've talked about new paintings in the collection. We've talked about my favorite paintings or sculptures called Jim's Picks. Uh, but what we haven't done is talked about where do you hang a painting in a building and what decisions are made to determine that. And we had that issue in the last few weeks at the league because we have another painting, a new painting, portrait coming into the, into the collection uh, at the end of the year. And so that prompted us to create this game of if A then B then B then C and do we have room for one more painting? So let's get started and see how we solve the problem. I think it's actually a lot of fun myself. So, and I hope that you'll enjoy it as well because uh, it really was a lot of fun. <laughs> so here we go, slideshow from the beginning. Okay, I'm calling it. There's gotta be room for one more, I hope. All right, so this is the lady that started it all. All right, Lucretia Mott the 19th century Philadelphia Quaker suffragette and abolitionist who with her husband James Mutt owned a farm called Roadside in what is today Cheltenham Township or Elkins Park back then it was called Chelton Hills I believe although I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong as they should so if you go north on Broad Street from the Union League house and go all the way to the north end you go across Cheltenham Avenue into Montgomery County and immediately on the left-hand side was the Mott Farm called Roadside. That's where the house was, right by the road. Now it's called Latham Park, I believe. And it was on part of the farm that the Motts leased land to the federal government on which they placed Camp William Penn, the first training camp in American history for black soldiers, all right? Because the Union League at this point is at the forefront and is the, uh, actually the, the League is the first organization to receive permission from the federal government to raise United States Colored Troop Regiments as they were known in the 19th century. And so they needed a place to train. Camp William Penn was it, and it was on the Mott Farm. So as you may have seen an episode, we have also reached just a year ago this month in September of 2021, we added a portrait of Frederick Douglass. And the two of them, Mott and Douglass, worked together with the League uh, to create and raise and train these US, these 11 USCT regiments at Camp William Penn. So, so that's how this all got started. Okay. All right. So here's the main, the first floor hallway at the, in the Broad Street building. The, the door is behind me. So I'm looking west down the hall and I apologize for the, sometimes the cell phone camera works well and sometimes it doesn't. So, but anyway, let's move to a better photograph. And here we go. So this is the left-hand wall that we're just looking at on the south side of the hallway. And from right to left, we have the Douglas portrait. That was, um, unveiled last September, 2021. On the far right, we have a painting called Three Medals of Honor that was commissioned by the then Abraham Lincoln Foundation and unveiled in June of 2013 to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the founding of the United States Color Troop Regiments in Philadelphia by the League. And it depicts the sixth USCT regiment uh, trained and mustered, tra trained and at Camp William Penn in its first major engagement called the Battle of New Market Heights on September 29th of 1864. So, and then in the center, we have a painting by Philadelphia artist Joseph John called Harvest Home and the War is Over. And it's a beautiful tableau about these post-Civil War scenes that, uh, and it shows how families are affected. So there are children, there, there's a young family where the boys are playing with their father's sword and musket, or there's a, a, a bride about to marry her soldier groom. And there are, veterans playing cards and there's a, um, a, a disabled veteran who lost his leg. And so there's all kinds of stuff in there. It's a really great painting. But where to put Lucretia Mott? So the idea then was to take the Joseph John painting, hang it someplace else in the league house, move the Troiani to the right and put it in the center. And then where it hangs now, we will hang the Lucretia Mott portrait because after all, Lucretia Mott, Frederick Douglass, Camp William Penn, USCT is in the middle. It all made sense. Bingo, done. Okay, but now the fun begins. All right, so where do you hang a big painting? Because the Harvest Home is roughly six feet tall by eight feet wide with frame. And so we go up to the second floor of the Broad Street building, uh, along the Broad Street line actually, uh, into what used to be the original library, but now called the McMichael Room. And so Broad Street is behind me to my back. 
we're looking at the west wall, the door is to the right. So to the left, we have Moravian Street. So again, the south side of the building. And we have two large paintings there and they will both get placed someplace else because not only do we have the lid house in which to hang paintings, but we also now have other properties, specifically the Union League Golf Club at Torsdale, where we have had paintings since 2015, and now the new Golf Club at Liberty Hill in Lafayette Hill, which just opened this past this year and in the spring of this year. And they don't have any paintings, but they could use some. And what better thing to do than hang paintings that say, this is the Union League of Philadelphia. So the one on the left in this photograph called uh, Bringing in the Hay, uh, by the Belgian artist Alexandre Veron is also six feet by eight feet. And that just so happens that there is a really big wall at Liberty Hill that can handle it. So let's see what that looks like. There you go. All right. Now, just so you know, though, the Mott portrait won't get hung on the Broad Street wall until January of 2023. So this wall will stay as is until that time when we were able to we'll move bringing the hay up to Liberty Hill. And in the meantime, there's another painting on the right-hand side. It's uh, the Grand Canal in Venice by Jean-Baptiste van der Moer, a Belgian artist. And it is four feet by six feet, including the frame. We already have, we have two Grand Canal scenes in the League House as it is. And the other one is in a much better location. It's an overmantel in the library lounge. And so this one would fit perfectly up at the Torsdale Clubhouse. So that will move there eventually. So here we go. Here's the, here's the ballroom at the Torsdale Clubhouse. Now, on this wall uh, in 2015 were two paintings, um, one called On the Field of Honor by Francois Fleming, and the other one was called George Washington Presenting Governor Dinwiddie's Letter to the Chevalier de Legardeau at Fort Le Bouff. That's a mouthful, I know, but they both fit perfectly. And more importantly, they both had wooden frames that were, um, which replaced the original 19th century frames in the 1950s, because these paintings hang rather low. And there's always a chance that the frame could get bumped. And if we use a 19th century uh, composition frame, it's a lot of money repaired. So we we're almost there. So we took those two paintings out because they're going to go someplace else because they've been on that wall since 2015. And we took a painting, the one on the right called Bringing in the Hay uh, by a New Brunswick artist, Jay Crawford Tom. And it had been in the lobby at Torsdale and we moved it into the ballroom. And we took, since we have another empty space there, we took a third painting that was hanging in the ballroom, but in a different location, a little more secure and um, secluded location. It's called A Toast to the Bride uh, by Frederick Schweringer, an Austrian artist. And as you can see, it has a very, it has one of those 19th century composition frames. So it's only going to be there until January of next year when we bring in the Grand Canal scene from Venice and hang it there in its place. So we're kind of holding our breath, but I think given that nothing's happened to a painting up in towards that, we think it's a good move for now. So that's how we've, so that's how we're taking the two paintings out of the McMichael room and putting them in two different clubhouses, if you will. Okay, all right. Now, in the lobby at Torsdale, where bringing the hay was hanging on this wall, we thought we needed something else. So we had no sculpture up there. So we thought, what better person than Abraham Lincoln? So this is a bust of Abraham Lincoln that was done by Agnes Yarnell from an old Philadelphia Quaker family. Uh, she was married to a Union League member named Lawrence Lepage, uh, who at one point was the president of the Franklin Institute. Uh, this was back in the 50s and the 60s. And um, the League purchased this bust from her in 1991. And at the time, she donated a 39-piece set of bronzes, all civil related, which are now in the League house on Broad Street. So we thought, and as you can see, it's a really marvelous image of Lincoln, but more, I love the style. It's called the additive style because it was really done in clay and then bronzed. So that is where Abraham Lincoln now resides at Torsdale. So now here is On the Field of Honor by Francois Flamang. So it went back from Torsdale, back to the League House, specifically into the old cafe. Now, as you can see, if you look to the far right, to the right of the door frame, you can see Harvest Home by Joseph John. So that's the hallway. So. And this painting actually hung here once upon a time before it was moved to Torsdale. But after we moved to Torsdale, we had to replace it with something else. And what did we have in its place? This painting that you see on the left-hand side. It's called The Battle of Louis Poupry by the French military artist Paul Grolleron. And this, is, this painting depicts uh, the French army in the Franco-Prussian War of 1877. And as you can see, they're not doing very well. And eventually, the French would lose that war itself. Magnificent painting. Um, I mean, you can hear 
the musket fire. And you can see you can see the smoke that he has coming out of the, the muzzles of the muskets. Just wonderful stuff. And Corleron would become Don Troiani's kind of artistic mentor when he was developing his skills as a military artist. Of course, Troiani did the three medals of honor in the Broad Street hallway. So you can see how art connects over generations and centuries, even. So and so this, so the Groleron is now hanging in the restaurant in the lodge, which is connected to the summit up at Liberty Hill. And on the right hand, it's actually the dining room is called Marquis by Denis Santiago, Denis Santiago. And the Marquis, of course, refers to the Marquis de Lafayette, who led the woefully outnumbered American forces at the Battle of Barren Hill when it took place, part of it took place on the property that's now part of Liberty Hill Golf Club itself. So, and on the right hand side, we have a different perspective of that painting on the wall. And you can see it's a big wall and it got a big painting. So the painting itself is only four feet by three feet. So, and you always measure paintings by height versus width. So four feet high, three feet wide, but you add in that beautiful 19th century composition frame and now it becomes a six foot by, by four, four and a half to five foot painting. So it really works well on that wall. It just pops from that one, it's great. All right, so what do we do next? All right, so this is the lobby to um, the lodge where you can check in off to the right. As you can see, the lobby area is still under construction, so to speak, and certainly under design. Uh, but when it is, but it's kind of neat to see it when it's in that condition. So here we have a large painting that was donated to the league recently by a member, George Torek, who was an art dealer. And George had this, and he thought it would make a wonderful addition to the collection up at Liberty Hill, and he was right. It was done by an American, actually a European expatriate artist named George Peter, who settled in the Philadelphia area. And this is his depiction of George Washington at Valley Forge painted in 1920. And we thought, well, since we're doing George Washington and this is Liberty Hill. And now keep in mind that there are two buildings at Liberty Hill. There is the, the lodge and the summit, which are the, the, the food and beverage, that is the restaurant operation, and then also the lodging and conferencing operation. And the theme for that is the Revolutionary War. And then you have the golf clubhouse and the theme there will be the Civil War. And we'll get to there in a few minutes. So since we're still doing Revolutionary War, George Washington, we had this wonderful portrait bust of George Washington in the League House that was originally done by the French sculptor uh, uh, Houdon, uh, Jean Houdon. And he went to Mount Vernon in 1785 and made a life mask of George Washington that he then turned or used to create this portrait bust of George Washington. That was then copied by the American sculptor William MacDonald in 1898. And that's what you see here, here in the lobby to the right of the, of the Washington painting at Valley Forge. They looked like they were meant to go together all these years. And who would have thought that that, that, that would work that well, but it did. So as you can see, looking off to the left, there's a wall over there behind that ladder. And of course that wall is going to get filled. So let's take a look. All right, there you go. You can see it there. But first we're back in Marquis and we're looking above, we're about a half a floor above the floor of that lobby area. And you can look through these blinds, I guess you call them. And you can still, you can see the, the George Peter and the Washington portrait bust. So art is visible from all over. Now here's the wall that we were just looking at. And here is that painting that I talked about earlier from the Torresdale Clubhouse uh, done by a League member, by the way, uh, Augustus Goodyear Heaton. And this is the George Washington presenting Governor Dinwiddie's letter to the Chevalier de la Gardot at Fort Le Boeuf. That's still a mouthful. And I hope you can tell that it's a, the painting's dark because it actually is, it takes place inside a log cabin. So there's no natural light except what's coming in through the door. But Washington is wearing a red coat. That is, he's an officer in the British Army because this is a time when the British and the French were contesting. Uh, the ownership of Western Pennsylvania, if you will. And so Washington was there as an emissary on behalf of the governor of Virginia, which of course is British. So, and what appropriate painting, because as it turns out, you know, who would have thought that you would have George Washington in a painting as a British officer, when during the Battle of Barren Hill, George Washington was the commander of the American forces themselves. So I, I think it's just great, a joint juxtaposition of using Washington in two different ways. So. Irony, I don't know. Anyway, good. it's the perfect painting on the perfect wall in the perfect place. So, all right. And here we have another painting we took from the League House that hadn't been seen in years because it had been in storage for a long time. And then the only wall big enough in the League House that could hold it was actually at the very top of the 15th Street stairwell on a landing between the third and fourth floors. It is called Moonlight on the Pond uh, by William Diddy Pouget, another 
a French artist. And it too is big. It's six feet tall, but by nine feet wide. And because it is moonlight, of course, it's dark. But by hanging on such a low wall, it has enough light that you can actually get to appreciate uh, the painting itself. And you can see the brush strokes and you can see the pond. And it, it actually, it, it, in person, it looks fantastic. So here's another depiction of it. And there's Joe, our librarian. All right. You get some idea now what the painting looks like on the right. Okay, you can see it now up closer, if you will. So, so it pops a little bit more. All right, so that's that's that. So next, we move to the lobby of the golf clubhouse, which is a separate building. And this is going to be Civil War themed. And so we thought the first thing somebody should see when they walk in is Abraham Lincoln. And the leg, or I should say the, the Legacy Foundation was recently presented with this bust of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, by Catherine Wigley, who's the daughter of Dr. Russell Wigley, who for years and years and years, for decades, taught uh, American history, but specifically Civil War history at Temple University. And for those decades, uh, the 1970s to the 1990s, he was the foremost expert on Civil War history in Philadelphia and spoke to the League on numerous occasions as well on Civil War topics. And in 2001, uh, for a book he published on the history of the Civil War, um, he was given the Gilder Lehrman uh, Lincoln Prize uh, through the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. And their prize is actually a bust of Abraham Lincoln that was taken from a life-size sculpture of Lincoln called Lincoln the Man or the Standing Lincoln done by the French sculptor saint Gaudens. And so this is the actual Lincoln Award that was given to Dr. Widely. Dr. Widely regretfully, very regretfully, and his wife have both passed on. And Catherine wanted this bronze bust to find a good home and what better home than the Union League. And we found a very good home for it at Liberty Hill. So it's right in the lobby when you walk in. And then in the dining room, appropriately called Grays, after the Washington Grays, after the 1st Regiment Infantry, Washington Grays, whose infantry sculpture stands on Broad Street to the south side of the, of the building, uh, we added three Civil War portraits. So the first one, the fireplace, was, is a, obviously can tell U.S. Grant. Now we had three Grant portraits in the League House. And we don't need three grand portraits, portraits in the League House. So we brought this one up to Liberty Hill. This was done, um, shucks, I'm having my first senior moment. Um, Anthony Lamore, who another expatriate European artist who settled in Philadelphia. And while he was in Philadelphia painting, there was a photographer named Frederick Gunnekunst, who was the foremost photographer in Philadelphia in the 1850s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and a Union League member, by the way. And this is based on a photograph that Gutekunst took of Grant at Army headquarters in April of 1865, right after Lincoln had been assassinated. What, you, what, what Lamore did not paint into the portrait is a mourning ribbon that Grant had wrapped around the upper left sleeve of his uniform, but it's in the photograph, which is really neat to see. So anyway, so that's a good size painting. It's uh, maybe five feet by five three and a half, four feet wide. So it's got a big wall and a big fireplace above it, or you know, firewall, if you will, or chimney pieces they are called. Uh, but it, it looks very nice there right now. And then off to the right, we have Captain Benjamin Davis, who was from Boston, and a Massachusetts regiment. And then here we have a scene of both Grant and Davis again. And then on the opposite wall from them, we have uh, Lieutenant Charles Murrayman. And the joint from the 23rd Boston, uh, 23rd Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. Um, and Murrayman would lose his life at the Battle of Laurel Hill in 1864. So they kind of round out our paintings in the restaurant, at least at this point in time. So, so wasn't that interesting to see? So what better way to end a talk about moving paintings around than a ladder and a blank wall that you know is going to be filled with something at some point in time. So, so, uh, it was challenging. And now we were, we were wondering how to, how to solve all these different painting puzzles, if you will. So as I said earlier, there's gotta be room for one more. And sure enough, we had lots of room for plenty more. And so stay tuned, no doubt, uh, after we move, after we hang Lucretia Mott in her appropriate place in January of 2023 in the Broad Street hallway, we'll move some more paintings around and maybe we'll come back and revisit the whole, the whole issue again. So, so I hope you enjoyed this, this episode. Um, it's always a pleasure to bring them to you. Uh, and it's and I hope you've been watching for the last couple of years because we've had a lot of fun doing these. Uh, we appreciate your patronage and your interest, and we hope uh, we'll see you uh, in two weeks when we do our next episode of Mondays with Monday. So in the meantime, stay well, take care, 
and be safe. Goodbye.